Uh, I'm going to 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 talk about uh, let me check. Okay, about absolutely stable discrete time crystals. And this work was done together with Christoph Gergel, Gia Wenk, Brian Dalton, and Peter Hanaford. And we need introduction. So first, I would like to tell you about how to create crystalline structure in time. How to create crystalline structure in time. So, and to this end, we need. I I have to. Ex simply explain uh, resonant driving of the particle. But instead of showing, presenting some mathematical formula, I will show you experiment. So this is very simple. So I would like to realize one-to-one -one resonance. And one-to-one -one resonance is simple because the particle period of the particle motion is equal to the period of the driving. Of course, if I move the bed twice faster, then I can create two-to-one resonance because then the period of the particle motion is twice longer than the driving period. And if I have two balls, and if I was better player, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> I have to practice. Yeah, but 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 then for the two-to-one resonant resonant uh, driving, I would keep two balls on the resonant trajectory by hitting them one by one. And of course, we can go to the higher and higher resonances. So that's a classical uh, uh, picture. But now uh, let us switch to the quantum description. When we switch to the quantum description, then, I, of course, we know that in the periodic driving, we have Floquet states. There are many, plenty of different Floquet states, but there are some resonant Floquet states which display the same kind of behavior which I have shown you in the, in the classical ca uh, case. And here you can see the example for 4 to 1 resonance. And the resonant Floquet states, which are plotted here in the configuration space, they are superposition of four localized wave packets which are moving along the 4 to 1 resonant orbit and which are bouncing off the mirror in this case. But this is a plot of the Floquet states in the configuration space for fixed moments of time. But this configuration space is not the domain where we can observe crystalline structure. Crystalline structure we can observe but in the time domain. Meaning that when we fix the position of in, in space close to the resonant orbit and we ask how the probability for the detection of the particle at this fixed point, how it changes in time, it reveals periodic crystalline structure in time. And this is the domain where we can observe crystalline behavior. And in order to make this conjecture more apparent, let us restrict ourselves to the Hilbert subspace, which is spent by this resonant localized wave packet, which are moving along the resonant trajectory. Then in this subspace, the energy of the particle, actually quasi-energy of the particle, takes the form of the time binding model, which we know from solid state physics, where J is a tunneling amplitude, which describes the tunneling of the particle between neighboring wave packets, but neighboring in the time domain. There is also longer time or range tunneling, but it is, it is orders of magnitude weaker, similarly like it is the case in the standard solid state situation. So this is the platform when we can investigate various condensed meta meta phases, but in the time domain. And this is a very flexible platform because we can apply different driving of the particle with different higher harmonics and that allows us to shape the effective periodic potential and also we can drive many body system and then we can investigate many body condensed matter phenomena and there is a whole bunch of of different phases which can we observe in this kind of systems anderson localization in in the time domain mod insulator in the time domain, many body localization in time crystalline structure, topological time crystals, even multidimensional time lattices and exotic long range interaction, ev induced even by contact inter original contact interaction between atoms. 
We can combine time and space crystalline structure to, together and we can deal with six dimensional crystals. We can even realize up to eight dimensional quantum hole effect. And we can also apply this kind of time engineering, resonant driving, in order to create some novel object like Anderson molecules, topological molecules. And the names in red are people who are present in the audience. Veronika, Egididius, Yakov, uh, Ali. There is also Gedrus Schlabis. I didn't know he would come, but he's also present here. So this is the first part of my talk, just as introduction. But this all crystalline structure which I, uh, I have introduced are somehow created by hand. But we know that in in uh, that or, uh, ordinary space crystals are uh, are uh, emerge spontaneously due to the interaction between many body system and due to the breaking of the space translational symmetry. And the question is if similar phenomenon can be observed but in the time domain. And this is a field initiated by Frank Wilczek in 2012. He considered time independent system, but I'm not going to talk about this, this kind of system and the problem with the initial proposal. I still stay with the periodically driven closed systems. So again, let us remind uh, you what, is, what we know from the Floquet formalism. Of course, you, if we have periodic driving, then the energy is not conserved, but we still can look for this kind of stationary states, which are I Floquet states and which are eigenstate of the Floquet Hamiltonian. And all Floquet states, ch uh, they change periodically in time with the driving period, because this is a discrete time translation or symmetry of the system. And I will show you that there are many body systems where this discrete time, time, tra time translation asymmetry can be spontaneously broken and the system can start moving with the period which is different than the period dictated by the drive. This discrete time translation asymmetry is spontaneously broken, new periodic motion uh, appears and new crystalline structure in time is observed. So let me start with the First proposal on atomics, in, with the help of the atomic system. So we are back to our uh, experiment. So what we have? Now we, we let us consider not a single atom or part particle bouncing on an oscillating mirror, but many body systems, ultra-cold atoms, which are bouncing on the mirror, which are bosons. And assume at, let us focus on the 2 to 1 resonant driving. And then. If the interaction between atoms are very weak, then nothing special happens because we basically recover what we see in the single particle case. However, when the in interaction between atoms are attractive and sufficiently strong, then we observe quantum phase transition because then it becomes uh, energetically favorable to group all atoms in one of the wave packet. And then very special uh, many body uh, Floquet state is formed for example, when we have all atoms in one of the wave packet plus all atoms in the other wave packet. And of course, this Floquet state evolves with the driving period because this is a Floquet state. But you can also see that this is a, actually a Schrodinger cat like state. So it is sufficient to measure the, the position of one of the atom and then the state collapses to one of these two states. And then the evolution uh, uh, starts with the period twice longer than the driving period. So new periodic motion appears and new crystalline structure in time turns up. And the lifetime of this symmetry broken states, we can very easily describe this system with, within the, so within the, basically within the rotating wave approximation. And within the rotating wave, wave, wave approximation, the lifetime of this symmetry broken state increases exponentially quickly to infinity with the increase of the number of uh, atoms. But this is an approximation, so we cannot, also we don't see in numerical simulation any signature of heating at, for, for periods of time much, much longer than, than relevant experimentally, but still the, we cannot claim that this kind of crystal is absolutely stable. 
that was in uh, 2015, but in a year later, the same ph phenomenon was proposed by indifferent system by two groups. They consider a chain of spins. And the parameters of this uh, Hamiltonian are randomly chosen. And this kind of Hamiltonian describes the so-called many-body localization. We heard about this during this conference. And what they, these two groups did, they start driving this system by means of periodically driving the, this system by means of the spin flip process. And again, the floquet flo states of this problem are Schrodinger cat like states, where, for example, we have superposition of all spin up and all spin down. And again, it is sufficient to measure the direction of only one spin, and the system collapses to one of these two states. And starting from this point, the evolution takes place with the period twice longer than the driving period, because two spin flip are necessary in order to return to the initial state. And again, the stability of these discrete time crystals was demonstrated with the help of numerical simulation for finite system and for finite evolution time. And there is no uh, mm, rigorous proof that this kind of crystals are uh, absolutely stable in a limit of a long, uh, uh, large number of, of, of particles and in the limit of the infinite evolution time. So the question, can we create some simple system where we can claim that there is absolute stability of discrete time crystals? So let us consider bosons on a ring with contact interactions, which is a standard Lieblinger model. And now let us turn on the time periodic driving in the form of the rotating lattice potential. And this Hamiltonian possesses discrete time and space translational symmetry. And let us switch to the moving frame. When we switch to the moving frame, uh, <coughs> we obtain the Hamil time independent Hamiltonian, which describes bosons in a double well potential. And it is known that uh, bosons with attractive contact interactions in the double well potential can reveal the so-called self-trapping phenomenon, where when they spontaneously localize in one of the potential well. And the spontaneous breaking of the symmetry of the double well potential corresponds to the spontaneous breaking of the discrete time translational symmetry in the laboratory frame and to the formation of discrete time crystal. So let me illustrate the, this with an exact result for finite, finite small number of particles. So this is a spectrum of our system in the moving frame. So this is eigenvalues of the time-independent Hamiltonians, which I have shown you in the previous slide. Uh, and this is versus the interaction strengths. So negative uh, interaction uh, coefficient correspond to the attractive interactions which you are interested in. And th let us first focus on the no, uh, no, uh, nearly non-interacting uh, uh, case around this zero uh, coupling constant value. And that the same is depicted here. So for if there is no interaction, there is then we observe gaps in the excitation spectrum, and these gaps are related to the tunneling process. That means that if we prepare bosons in one of the potential well, then when we observe this system in the laboratory frame, we, we see that initially there is a periodic evolution with the period twice longer than the driving period, but this is for short evolution time. For longer evolution times, the uh, uh, tunneling process, process breaks this periodic evolution. And this is illustrated here. This is just uh, the time evolution for different interaction strengths. So let us first focus on the everything that is happening above this uh, white line. So initially, the bosons are prepared in, a, in, a, in, the, mo in the moving frame. It is pr prepared in one of the potential well. And then after one period of the driving, we see that bosons are on, on the other side of the ring. After another driving period, they are back to the initial location. 
but this is for short evolution time. If we uh, wait longer, then tunneling process breaks this time evolution, uh, periodic evolution. However, we know that when we increase the interaction strength, we observe quantum phase transition indicated by this blue line. For finite system, we need to uh, increase a bit more the interaction strength in, uh, strengths in order to see uh, degeneracy in the spectrum. And then when we pre prepare bosons in this regime, when we prepare bosons in one of the potential well, then we observe uh, periodic evolution with the driving, with the twice longer period than the driving period. And, and uh, this evolution uh, lives forever if we consider infinite number of particles. We have attractive interactions here, we consider attractive interactions, but I would like to stress that we are not in the bright soliton regime. Bright soliton regime requires much stronger interaction because then the basically bound state of atom is formed. And there is also there is a difference between the regime which we consider, for example, here and the bright soliton regime when we ask about the character of the lowest excitations. Uh, uh, because in the bright soliton, here we have, uh, uh, let's say, the lowest excitation corresponds to the quantum depletion of atoms from one of the potential world to the other one. In the bright soliton regime, the lowest excitation corresponds to the excitation of the center of mass of the bright soliton. And this is basically a single body body character, but this is for much stronger inter interaction. Now let me let us forget for a moment about the periodic driving in the form of the rotating lattice potential and let us consider different driving. The driving in the form of periodic kicking of the boson on the ring. And then when we switch again to the moving frame and apply basically the rotating wave approximation, when we again obtain time uh, effective time independent Hamiltonian which is identical to the Hamiltonian which we have analyzed. And that means that we can expect in this kind of driving, we can expect exactly the same kind of discrete time crystal and in the previous case. And, and moreover, when we, among many different quasi-energies of this Hamiltonian, we should find the resonant quasi-energies which should match very well the spectrum which we see here. And indeed, these red dots correspond to the exact quasi-energies of this kicking, uh, kicked Hamiltonian. But there is a fundamental difference between this system and the system which I have uh, considered previously, because in this plot the, we see only selected eigenenergies, quasi-energies of this Hamiltonian, but in a single flocason there are plenty of others quasi-energies, which in principle can be coupled to this uh, time crystal states in a very high order, especially when we consider a large number of particle limit. And this is different as compared to the previous, to the rotating wave, uh, rotating uh, lattice potential, because, because the Floquet spectrum for, for this previous case is a consist of independent copies of this spectrum shifted by integer multiple of the driving frequency. And there is absolutely no coupling between them. So that's all. So let me summarize. The previously proposed discrete time crystals were demonstrated by reducing description of the system to approximate time-independent model, models or in numerical simulation of finite system. And we have shown that it is possible to construct discrete time crystals which correspond to the equilibrium state of the exact time independent Hamiltonian. And actually this kind of crystals can be experimentally can be realized in the same way as vortices in a Bose-Einstein condensates. That means by cooling the system in the presence of the rotating thermal cloud. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the demonstration in the opening part of the talk. <laughs> Do we have? Yes, we have. Edwin has question. Uh, so, Christoph, thank you very much, as usual. Um, so I wanted to ask about the uh, periodic kicking. I, I was surprised that uh, you 
find this uh, like long-lived state. I was hoping that maybe you introduce dissipation as usually people do to kind of eliminate heating from periodic kicking. So where, where, where does the heating go? Uh, okay, so that, this is a basic question concerning the stability of the discrete time crystals. Because if you can, uh, this is uh, how to prove that the system breaks ergodicity and moreover the, the periodic evolution of discrete time crystals stay forever. So in, in, the, in the kicking case, of course, we cannot, uh, let's say, claim that it is absolutely stable. So that this is just more generic uh, system when we can realize discrete time crystals. And of course, we know that effectively the system behaves like this Hamiltonian, but concerning the question about the, its absolute stability and the absolute lack of heating, uh, heat, uh, heating, we cannot claim. So that is why what we ha actually did, we construct, because this is a generic uh, Hamiltonian, so of, of course what is important in this Hamiltonian is just single harmonic which resonantly coupled to our system. So we have re uh, decided, okay, let's, let's de design the Hamiltonian when the, where, where there is only this one resonant harmonic, and that's all. And that, that, that corresponds in the in the, for the system on the ring, it was possible, and that corresponds to the Hamiltonian which we have considered. I don't know if it is answer your question. Or well, with time crystals, it's always difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, anyway. Okay, Tilman Fau has the question. Thanks a lot uh, uh, for this nice uh, talk. I, I had a question about your comment about the bright solitons. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, this is a periodic system and there, there are excitations and there might be an effective mass or there are solitons that are maybe lattice uh, solitons, yes, that uh, are changing their properties due to the effective mass that they actually have. So, c is it fair to say that you are in a regime not of bright solitons in free space, but in a periodically, in a periodic system where you have something like an effective mass? Actually not, because we, the, the, the basic, uh, let's say, criterion, uh, if you are in or not in the bright soliton regime, is a question if, or basically, if the width of this wave packet is comparable to the bright soliton width in the free space. And it, in this regime, this is much, much, let's say, smaller. Because the shape of this of this uh, wave packet is determined not by the interaction, but but by the resonant driving. So that is this is that what is important in the interaction strengths, and you are certainly out of the. Of course, one can of, of, of analyze also the bright soliton regime, but this is this is what I am presenting is definitely definitely not. The, the excitations of this mm -hmm. periodic system in, in, in the time domain now, can you say something about this? Do you expect, let's say, a phonon uh, branch in the time domain or...? Mm -hmm. But this, this, I think that it, it's uh, more, uh, more is it, it is more related to the, f the first part of my talk. Yes. When I was uh, talking about how to create the periodic behavior which can be uh, described by the solid state like Hamiltonian. Yes. Because, uh, cause of course, we are not interested in uh, any periodic motion. We are interested in a specific periodic motion which behind this is just the same kind of behavior like in a solid state. And of course, then you can have ma many different uh, solid state like Hamiltonian created in this way. And then you can analyze many different kinds of excitation. So this is a just this is just I would say the the least what you can do, but probably even more. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More questions? Yeah. So, uh, Krzysztof, how does the lifetime of symmetry breaking state change as your system uh, grows or uh -huh. gets smaller? <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is this is of course always uh, concerning the symmetry breaking, and it regardless if it is. Uh, if we ask about uh, space crystals or or time crystals, 
in order to to kill this quantum effect which is responsible for for example in, in this case for tunneling we have to consider macroscopic number of particles limit because then in our case it is uh, the tunneling uh, we know that uh, tunneling uh, in uh, the time of the tunneling and the breakdown of this time crystal increases exponentially quickly with the increase of the number of particles so even in numerics if we consider I don't know, 20 particles, it is not measurable. Okay. Uh, in your rotating lattice potential, you focused on S equal to, can be mm -hmm. any integer? Yeah, this is a good question, yeah. because in, I, because of time, I didn't want to, let's say, to, to tell everything. <laughs> so, of course, in, in, in our case, uh, depending on the, you know, which resonance you want to realize, then it turns out that you can uh, you can have also discrete time crystals which evolve with the period much much longer not twice longer but even 100 in the experiment it can be done 100 longer than the driving period and this system are suitable for the realization of this condensed matter phenomena okay thank you uh, let's thank once again for our speaker <laughs>